When it comes to media, there are three kinds of reasons it'll be hyped up. Some media is hyped up because it's a new release from a famed artist, director, studio, or is a new installment in a blockbuster series. Some media is hyped based on the merits of the media itself, because it's a good movie, film, or album. And some media is hyped solely because it's pandering to the right people. Most notably, the critics who care more about diversity quotas and if games tick off the right diversity checkboxes than the merits of the media itself. And this isn't just in games, you'll see this in movies a lot too. Just look at the whole media circus over La La Land. Or better, all the people who managed to turn the last Super Bowl game into a whole discussion about race and politics and Donald Trump for some reason. I mean, there were people who were saying that the Patriots winning the Super Bowl were racist because they won against another team. I mean, that is how deep in the rabbit hole these kinds of people are. But anyhow... While those last two things might have been restricted to woke people on social media and op-eds, this trend really reared its head last year in 2016, with the whole coordinated media circus that came and went around a Ghostbusters remake with an all-female cast, which was marred by disliked videos on YouTubes, the media screeching about how it was these racist trolls who were disliking this remake, and Twitter's CEO using an incident in which actor Leslie Jones was trolled hard by 13-year-old kids posting Harambe memes as an opportunity to ban a prominent user that he really hated from the site, accumulating with an infamous Time Magazine Carver article on trolls that ended up being the print version of the infamous Fox News Hackers on Steroids report. They call themselves anonymous. They are hackers on steroids, treating the web like a real-life video game, sacking websites, invading MySpace accounts, disrupting innocent people's lives. And if you fight back, watch out. There were also positive reviews of this movie from sites such as Polygon, you know, a gaming site, or at least a website that puts on the facade of a gaming site. I think it's blatantly obvious that there's an agenda being pushed when gaming sites are talking about this movie that's being pushed by all these other media sources. But that was 2016. This is 2017, the current year, and Sony is releasing their new hyped-up video game, Horizon Zero Dawn. Now, sure, it's a Sony exclusive, so it's going to be front and center in PS4 ads on networks such as ESPN, and probably tossed in with bundles as well. However, the game has had interesting media coverage, echoing that of 2016's Ghostbusters, along with other games such as, um, you know, Bioware's newest video games, with a Guardian writer gushing over it, calling it the feminist action game we've been waiting for, and the AV Club calling it woke as hell in the title of an article talking about it and praising the game not for its gameplay which the gamer who was playing the game disliked but because it ticked off all the required mandatory diversity boxes but of course maybe this game is good maybe in the eyes of a hybrid or tesla driver I'm being triggered by a strong, playable, woman female character. Maybe this game is the bestest, best game ever, and I'm just not seeing it because I'm being blinded by the fact that developers are trying to force agendas and whatnot in video games. Not like, like, yeah, maybe, maybe I'm just not getting it. So, let's talk about the game itself. Let's put this to the side for a bit, and let's talk about the game itself. Now, what is Horizon Zero Dawn, you may ask? Well, it's a role-playing game for the PlayStation 4, an action one. Now, this game is developed by Guerrilla Games. You know, the same developers of the Killzone franchise that was always supposed to be the PlayStation's answer to Halo and a Halo killer, but instead it ended up being a cut-rate shooter that nobody cared about? Yeah, that's who developed this game, the makers of Killzone. So you already know that this game's gonna be good. Maybe if Killzone was a Halo killer, though, this game is more or less of an Elder Scrolls or Zelda killer or Witcher killer. 
I mean, after all medieval fantasy role-playing games that are open-world, such as The Witcher and Elder Scrolls, have gained popularity. And even the new Zelda, from what I've heard, is actually modeled on those kinds of games, and less on the older Zelda games. And I even heard you could beat Breath of the Wild in a few minutes by doing the classic Elder Scrolls technique of going straight to the final boss. So it probably didn't take the developers a lot of effort to look at the bestseller charts and see Skyrim there and think, hey, maybe we should make our game just like this, and wholesale copying and pasting is going to be a theme in this game. But anyways, let's talk about the presentation of the game. Now, the game is really in your face about how cinematic it is, and when you start the game, you see a several-minute cutscene that goes on and on with the story and doesn't stop. And this is before you even get to see the title screen. It's just like a movie. What is this story, you might ask? Well, you play as a girl who's an outcast from her tribe in a fictional fantasy world with a twist. You see, instead of finding traditional fantasy creatures that are keeping humans down, you're fighting a bunch of robots that essentially do the same exact thing. And they act just like animals too, and they're also more powerful than you, because the only weapons you have are things like bows and arrows and whatnot. And of course, these robot enemies just want to kill you. That's all they want to do, is kill you. It takes an hour before the game starts, as you accidentally fall into an abandoned base where you find out some weird cult ritual happened from audio logs that sounded like something out of one of the Dead Space sequels. After more training rituals, you end up in the game itself, and wow, it feels like so many other modern generic open world games, and especially ones that followed in the wake of the success of Bethesda's games. Horizon Zero Dawn checks off all the modern-day open-world game boxes. A tower system? Check. Big empty environments with random enemies? Check. A crafting system? Check. An unlock system? Check. Map markers? Check. Some basic stealth mechanics? Check. So what does this game do different than, say, the typical Elder Scrolls title or other games just like them, such as Bethesda's Fallout games? Well, you're fighting a robotic dinosaurs instead of regular enemies. Who knows, maybe they did this so they'd get that coveted T for teen rating and sell to teenagers whose mom wouldn't let them buy The Witcher, Dragon Age Inquisition, or Skyrim. Games also on the PS4, but that are rated M for Mature, which means that little Jimmy can't buy them without his mom's ID. Combat is a bit clunky. You have to get the bow and arrow ready, and you fire at them. You have to use some tactics and stock up on health items, and by tactics I mean camping, as the AI will rush you easily if you don't sit around picking off robots from a distance, taking advantage of the stupid AI this game has. It's boring picking off enemies from a distance, and only fun when enemies are right next to you trying to actually kill you. At least the controls are similar to numerous other games you've likely already played. I had more fun playing Fallout 4 of all things, you know, the one that tried to emulate shooters but failed thanks to its buggy, dated engine? Perhaps the worst thing about Horizon Zero Dawn in the gameplay department is that nothing in this game feels original. It ticks all the boxes, and due to that, it feels like so many other games I've played at one point or another. Like it's trying to play it way too safe. The writing in this game is pretty meh. There are some social justice themes in this game, such as anti-male undertones and some forced diversity, but that's not the worst part of the writing by far. The Ryan in Horizon Zero Dawn is criminally boring. It's like, nothing about it is interesting at all. Its pacing isn't interesting at all, and I could care less about it, and especially not the mediocre ending in which, plot twist, all the humans were actually machine replacements after the real ones died long ago. However, the writing does have its moments, including this Oscar-winning scene directed by famous movie director Tommy Wiseau. Let's watch it and see how emotional this game is. I will. I'll, I'll kill myself. I'll kill myself before I hurt her. You, you're not a spirit. What do you want? I want you to step away from the edge, Brom. No. Leave me alone. Can't you see I need time to think? I, how, how, how am I supposed to think when everybody is shouting at me? Don't you agree that that's an amazing performance? And that it's a deep emotional game worthy of a 9.3 out of 10 from IGN. 
don't disagree with me, though, because if you do, I heard you're one of those alt-right racist trolls I've heard a lot about from the media. Anyways, back to the review. The music is the kind you'd expect for this kind of game, and the graphics are a mixed bag. The graphics in this game feel inconsistent, looking stunning at parts, but then the character models and shadows feel like they're straight out of an Unreal Engine 3 game, and the animations for cutscenes are even worse. There's also pop-in at times, and the game is locked at 30 frames a second. Perhaps the biggest problem with this game was the timing of the release. It was released a few days before Zelda, Breath of the Wild for the Wii U and the Nintendo Switch, which is launching on the same day. Now sure, Zelda might also be overhyped and also mediocre in the end, but it has a critical difference. It has a big brand name attached to it. It's a well-known intellectual property, being enjoyed by neckbeards who still play Nintendo games, kids who claim they have a better taste than those other kids who play Call of Duty since they play only old games, and furries who are already opening up commission slots to pay for the Switch and Zelda. Nobody is opening up commission slots to pay for Horizon Zero Dawn, but they are for Zelda, and that should tell you about how much better Zelda's going to sell and be cared about by people on the internet, because people on the internet who are into Zelda aren't going to be shutting up about it, while everybody's going to forget about Horizon Zero Dawn. And it's easy to see why. It's a game that plays it safe and ticks all the boxes in order to get positive coverage from gaming journalists and sell for a week before landing in the bargain bin at GameStop. It has social justice themes, it has systems ripped out of other games, it has an open world you can explore that is empty and has towers, and it's got ads on television. I have no idea if they were genuine with their beliefs with this game, or if they were exploiting a similar strategy to Ghostbusters 2016 and having the media prop it up, but either way, this game will be forgotten about in a few weeks, guaranteed. It's just so boring, and it's one of the most forgettable games I've played recently, and that's all you can say, really. Its worst crime isn't anything political, but it's the fact that it flat out sucks. Then again, who knows? Maybe if game developers stopped trying to get woke points, they'd make games that are actually good. Just look at GDC 2017 and what's going on there. And that's all that needs to be said. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more.